Since we first unveiled the idea for a new high-speed ground transport system called the Hyperloop back in 2013, there has been a tremendous amount of interest in the concept. We are excited that a handful of private companies have chosen to pursue this effort. Let me get this straight. Elon Musk unveils an idea to the public, an idea that is so interesting and appealing that a handful of private companies manifests for the chance to engineer his idea. What's this idea? A way to transport people from San Francisco to Los Angeles in 35 minutes. Before I explain what this is, I want you to imagine one of those capsules you put your Walgreens prescriptions in at the drive-thru. One second it's at your car window, the next second it's vacuumed up a tube and in the hands of your pharmacist. Now imagine that, but for people. For Elon, this idea came when he was sitting in traffic. After being an hour late to a meeting and discovering that California State approved a high-speed rail system that just wasn't up to his standards, Musk was not happy. His ideal transportation system would be faster, cheaper, safer, and most importantly, sustainably self-powering the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop would travel at speeds of over 700 miles per hour in a low friction suspension system, basically through a cushion of air like a puck sliding across a hockey table. The pod will act like the puck and travel inside the tube to carry passengers between cities. Now a few questions arise. How will this low friction suspension system work? What type of energy is needed to run this whole system? And what does this mean for everyday commuters? Let's start with how the system works. Sealing the tube would create this type of compressed system like a dense environment of air. Think of this like a syringe. Air will get stuck in front of the pods and if you wanna push the pod forward inside of the tube, you have to push the entire column of air in front of the pod forward as well. This is a problem known as the Kantrowitz limit. This air problem would completely block the pod from traveling really fast through the tube. So Elon comes up with an idea. He says, instead of the air in the tube only going through those tiny gaps between the outside of the pod and the tube, let's have the air move through the pod. So he proposes that by mounting an electric compressor fan on the nose of the pod, it can actively transfer high pressure air from the front to the rear and overcome the Kantrowitz limit. It would relieve pressure like a vacuum sucking in air as it moves forward and a jet pushing air out the back. In this case, it's the pod that's producing the air cushion rather than the tube. Back to our hockey table, it would be like the puck providing the air cushion, not the table. Now to the question of energy. A battery would provide plenty of energy to run the fan, but not enough power to move the pod forward. That's where the external linear electric motor comes in. This is simply a round induction motor like the one in the Tesla Model S rolled flat. This would accelerate the pod to high subsonic velocity and reboost every 70 miles. But there's more. By placing solar panels on top of the tube, the Hyperloop can generate plenty of energy needed to operate and some. Now to why do we care? Well, environmentally speaking, the Hyperloop eliminates the need for land. Big cement columns, known as pylons, would place the tube and pods above ground like a light rail and follow along the interstate. The pylons would absorb small changes with adjustable lateral and vertical dampers, and as land slowly settles to a new position over time, they can be adjusted accordingly. And if all of this weren't enough, it would be several billion dollars cheaper than typical railway systems. I think Elon has made his point here. A flight between San Francisco to LA is a little over an hour. The Hyperloop would cut this down to 35 minutes, carrying 28 passengers every 30 seconds. The route would follow I-5 and have the capacity to transport 6 million passengers, 70% of which would use the Hyperloop during rush hour. There is still substantial technical challenge that stand in the way of making this a reality, but nonetheless, I can't wait to see what comes of this idea. Unfortunately, Musk can't take on the challenge himself, seeing that he's already sending reusable rockets to space and trying to mass distribute electric vehicles, but he is actively encouraging and supporting anyone who's up for the challenge. For Penta Tech, I'm Kelby Weiler.